Please stand. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. My friends, as we begin our Eucharist on this sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time, we acknowledge our failings in the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the great prophet who has arisen in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were unafraid to reach out to the outcast. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you preached the good news of salvation to all. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab, or pustule, or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean, as long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord.
Blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Bless the man whom the Lord imputes no guilt, and whose spirit is no my transgression to the Lord, and you have forgiven the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice in the Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of many, that they may be saved. Be, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and, kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we are celebrating Commitment Sunday for our faith 
Hope and Healing Program. I would like to invite Tony DiPaolo, our parishioner and friend, to speak with you for a few moments on how he is living as a faithful steward here at St. Paul's Parish and participating in the important ministries and organizations within our parish. Tony. Good afternoon. Like my senior said, I'm Tony DiPaolo, and I serve on two of our parish councils and other ministries. Monsignor asked me to give my testimony about our parish and our faith. I attended St. Francis Xavier Cabrini Grade School in West Granton, a school that St. Francis started in 1899. In 1946, she, was, she became the first U.S. citizen to be canonized. I have always been a practicing Catholic, so I have no interesting conversion story. Having had a loving family, caring nuns as teachers, and a church that has withstood trials and persecutions over centuries always gave me a feeling of being told the truth, the truth that has become more apparent as our culture changes. My wife and I moved to Green Ridge over 40 years ago. That's when we joined St. Clair's Parish, which was then consolidated with St. Paul's. Since joining, I have learned how generations of families have attended and supported our two schools. Our basketball programs have helped form our children for decades, with our son being one beneficiary. The fundraising for and the remodeling of St. Paul's Gym was an astounding feat, initiated by a few, but supported by the whole community. Many people dedicate days and even weeks every year operating our food pantry and the summer festival. I developed many lasting friendships while working on the setup crew for the block party. As a lector and choir member, I am continually struck by how the Old Testament readings predict and prefigure Jesus by centuries and even millennia. Our homebound and healthcare residents really appreciate visits from our Eucharistic ministers. In one case, a resident from a nearby personal care home who had no family, starting attended, attending daily Mass. Some of the parishioners began helping her in small ways. When she died, Monsignor arranged for and celebrated her funeral Mass with many of the parishioners attending. Like everyone, I've had my ups and downs. When my father was at the end of his life, what is known as ordinary care was not being administered. Consulting with a priest gave me the confidence to get him the care that he deserved. To this day, I still ponder the whole ordeal. Yet my trial certainly wasn't any as dire as some of the misfortunes I've seen in this parish, like prolonged sicknesses and sudden and tragic deaths. I've also seen immense outpouring by parishioners in response as they offered comfort, prayers, support, and condolences. In these cases, strange questions conjure up in our minds. Why do suffering and evil happen? If God is good, why does he allow bad, bad things to happen? The only answer I can come up with is because. I guess we wish the world would be perfect, but if it were, how would we, how would we act? Would we become self-centered, irrespective of God? Maybe suffering and evil move us to rely on God and each other. As St. Peter said, Master, to whom shall we go? For all the disorder in this world, there is also much more order. The same God who made the heavens and the earth also made us. So he knows what is good for us, and therefore he told us how to live, not to command us, but out of his love for us. And what greater love does he have for us than by giving us Jesus? Thank you. <coughs> 
Tony, thank you for your very kind and uh, thoughtful words and for your time today uh, and for bearing witness to our parish community on how you have participated in our important ministries and witnessed how, as a parish, we're bringing Christ to the lives of others. I invite each of you to complete now your commitment card. This is an opportunity to reflect and renew your sacrificial commitment to support the mission of St. Paul's Church. For those that are able to, please consider a one-time gift of recovery. Let us all take a moment to complete our cards. For those who are joining us at home, there is an electronic commitment card on our website at www.church.com. And now, for those of you who brought your cards to church, we invite you to complete them. For those who did not, there are commitment cards at the ends of each of the pews. And now as a faith-filled community, each of us is making a covenant with God to support our parish. Uh, let us together ask God to pour forth his blessing upon our parish community and all those in need. I pray that the members of our parish continue to glorify God by praying and working together to accomplish his will. And now I'm going to place my card in the basket here in the front of the church and later on, when you come up to receive Holy Communion at the end of Mass, we'd invite you to place your cards there as well. And now let us stand as together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by the name, unsubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and him, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in front of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and was crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge those of man today, and his kingdom will have it. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of Lord. Who has spoken through the prophets? I believe in one who will lead the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us turn to God in confident prayer. That's, that God's goodness will be a source of wisdom for all members of the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that God's goodness will be a course of peace for nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that God's goodness will be a source of holiness for us 
as we walk in the way of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the success of our faith, hope, and healing program, that we may share our gifts in this challenging time to provide the resources to continue our mission here at St. Paul's. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That God's will be a source of comfort for those who suffer in mind or body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That God's goodness will be a source of everlasting life for those who have died, especially Jock Saunders, and in particular we remember Patrick Dewar, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. God of wisdom and love, you understand our every need even before we ask. Show us your goodness in answer to these prayers that we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that your sacrifice and mine might be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands, but the praise of the Lord of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become, for those who do your will, the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. <coughs> Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer one another now a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the Now, for those viewing from home, I invite you to join me in a spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. My friends, on Wednesday of this week, we begin the great penitential season of Lent. And to that end, on Ash Wednesday, we will celebrate Mass at 8, 12, 10, and 5 o'clock. And ashes will be distributed during those masses uh, after uh, the gospel and homily. Ashes will be distributed a little bit differently this year than in years gone by in light of the COVID. Uh, Instead of anointing your foreheads with the blessed ashes, we'll sprinkle but a bit uh, on the crown of your head as you come forward. And so it's going to be different this year as are all things different in this great time of the pandemic. Uh, Also, starting on Wednesday, we will have uh, a weekday mass uh, in addition to the 8 a.m. mass at 1210, Monday through Friday. Part of the um, Lenten experience is it's a time of of penance and prayer and also almsgiving. So I invite you to join in the annual parish program of Helping Hands. At the door of the church, you'll find Uh, blue bags with helping hands printed on it. It's a way of restocking uh, our parish food pantry for the many people that come there to ask for food that we distribute to them. Inside each bag, you'll find a list of items that are particularly needed at the food pantry. And finally, for those of you who uh, did not complete a commitment card here in church today or are viewing from home, Uh, We want you to know that prior to last weekend, 
uh, when I first spoke about our new uh, commitment program, we mailed an envelope to all of our families. Unfortunately, uh, a week and, or better later, they have not been received in some of our parish households. So we invite you to complete your cards and to either mail them in or bring them to the rectory. There's nothing we can do uh, once we place those items in the United States Mail Service. And now let us stand as we conclude our prayer. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks.